So in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can create a Windows Server failover cluster running Windows Server 2016 where member servers are not joined to an Active Directory domain. Here's a high level overview of how the cluster would look like. I've got three nodes, two nodes in my production data center and one node in my disaster recovery data center. All of these servers are not joined to my Active Directory domain. I'm currently logged in on WSFC 2016 node one and all of the steps that I'm going to do on this server have already been done on the other two servers that I'm going to join in my failover cluster. Let's review the settings of the server. Notice that the server is not joined to an Active Directory domain. It's just part of a work group. What we're going to do is we're going to assign a primary DNS suffix for this particular server and all of the other servers that will join to our failover cluster. For this example, I'm going to use my internal DNS fully qualified domain name as the primary DNS suffix. Whenever I reference this computer, I could call at WSFC 2016-node1.testdomain.com, which is the fully qualified domain name. Now, because this server is not part of an Active Directory domain, it could not take advantage of the Active Directory and DNS integration where an entry in Active Directory will create a corresponding entry in the DNS, which means we have to manually create a DNS entry for this specific machine. Now setting the fully qualified domain name for the primary DNS suffix will prompt for a reboot. Let's reboot this machine. After the primary DNS suffix has been assigned to all of the servers that you're going to join to your failover cluster, we need to add the corresponding DNS records for each of those servers. I'm going to log into my DNS server and add those records. Since I use the testdomain.com uh, DNS zone in my primary DNS suffix, I need to add the corresponding DNS record for the server's host name. Right click on the zone, select new host record. To create a new host record, I need to provide a host name for the machine and the corresponding IP address. We need to do this on all of the servers so we need to join to the failover cluster. In my case, I've already created the DNS records for WSFC 2016 node 2 and dash node 3. Now we can test by running a ping test on all of those servers. I get a response from node 3. I also get a response from node 2. And finally from node 1. After configuring the primary DNS suffix on all of the servers that you want to join to the failover cluster and adding the corresponding DNS host records, we can proceed to install the failover clustering feature and create the Windows Server failover cluster. Now recall the lesson on preparing the servers. The same prerequisites apply when you decide to create a Windows Server failover cluster running Windows Server 2016 but with no Active Directory involved. In this case, because you can't use domain accounts, you would have to create local user accounts on all of those servers. The local user account has to be the exact same account. What that means is the login has to be the same, the password 
has to be the same and they all have to be members of the local administrators group. That's because you need to have the appropriate permissions to create and manage the Windows Server failover cluster. I'm currently logged in using the account Clus SVC. This is the local user account that I created on all of those servers that I'm going to join to my failover cluster. And this account belongs to the local administrators group. I also need to set the password to be the same on all of those servers. As I mentioned, this account is a member of the local administrators group. Now you can use the built-in administrator account, that's just fine. But it's not a good practice, which is why I created a dedicated account for creating and managing the failover cluster. Now, because we're not using the built-in local administrator account, we need to set the local account token filter policy registry setting for all of the servers. I'm going to use the PowerShell command new item property. This will add the registry setting for the local account token filter policy. Now, you don't have to do this if you're using the local administrator account. I've already done this on WSFC 2016 node 2 and node 3. We can now proceed to add the failover clustering feature and create our Windows Server failover cluster. Under Server Manager, click on Add Roles and Features. The experience is the same as with Windows Server 2008 and Windows Server 2012. Once the installation completes, we can go ahead and create our Windows Server failover cluster. We can then use the failover cluster management console to create the failover cluster. Now, unlike in Windows Server 2012 R2, where you can only use Windows PowerShell to create an Active Directory detached failover cluster, Windows Server 2016 allows you to create a workgroup or a multi-domain failover cluster using the failover cluster manager. But before we even create our failover cluster, let's go ahead and run failover cluster validation wizard. Provide the name of all the servers that you want to act as nodes in your failover cluster. You can proceed to run all of the tests or choose run only tests I select. I just want to show you some of the new options in Windows Server 2016 failover cluster, like the option for storage spaces direct. We'll cover this in a future lesson. But just to give you an insight of what is covered in the failover cluster validation wizard plus some of those new checks. I'll choose run all tests. Now keep in mind that we're going to have a few warnings as expected. For instance, the storage spaces direct will throw a warning and we can ignore that because we're not going to be using storage spaces direct for this example. Review the results of the failover cluster validation wizard. Notice under system configuration, under the validate active directory configuration, you see a warning. Of course, that's expected because we don't have active directory involved. Once the failover cluster validation wizard completes and you've addressed all of the warnings and the errors that are applicable to this particular failover cluster, you can go ahead and create the cluster. You can check the create the cluster now using the validated nodes option and click finish. Now before we proceed, I want to highlight a few things. Similar when you were planning on how to build a failover cluster with earlier versions of Windows Server, you have to think about 
type of quorum and the workload that you're going to run on top of this failover cluster. Now, since we're focused on SQL Server, the one thing to keep in mind is you can only run availability groups on top of this failover cluster, not SQL Server failover cluster instance because it requires Active Directory. When you create a SQL Server failover cluster instance, it still needs to create the corresponding cluster name object. And because, well, we don't have Active Directory in this case, we can't run a SQL Server failover cluster instance. In terms of quorum, we can only use a disk witness, a cloud witness, which is new in Windows Server 2016, and node majority as a quorum configuration. Again, you can't use the file share witness because you would need some form of authentication to access that file share. With that in mind, let's create our Windows Server failover cluster. Let's provide a name. Let's name it WSFC 2016 WG. And because this is a multi subnet or a multi site failover cluster, it sees that I have two IP addresses for two network subnets. Let's provide a virtual IP for each of the network subnet. Let's click next. Review the settings for the failover cluster. Note the cluster registration specifies DNS only. Similar to the Active Directory detached failover cluster in Windows Server 2012 R2, no Active Directory object will be created as part of this process. Click Next. Once the failover cluster is created, you can always view the report. And you can print this out and attach it to your runbook. And click Finish. We now have a Windows Server failover cluster that is not joined to an Active Directory domain. This one has three nodes. Using a disk witness as a witness type. 